Welcome back. In video 4 we had a look at the dagger boards and steering. During that first year living on the boat I replaced the original boards with one large dagger board which you can see on the later videos. Catamarans have earned a reputation of being not very good at going to wind and when I first got in the water I was also not impressed. I started taking measurements of speed and wind angle and sat down to study the situation. It was back in the late 90s, I didn't have a computer and googling for information wasn't a concept for me back then. I spent the first summer on my boat anchored in Sydney Harbour, so I spent quite a bit of time in the Sydney Library down in their archives going through a book I found on the hydrodynamics of sailing. I came to the conclusion that the only reason cats don't go to wind as well as monohulls, they simply don't have enough keel area. And not only that, the cord of a dagger board is too short. The only reason I could think of as to why catamarans have such small dagger boards is that because cats are faster, you don't need as much area to create the same amount of lift. The thinking may hold true when the boat's moving fast, but as soon as you slow down, you have a problem. It means you have to move fast all the time, otherwise your board is too small. For a cruising boat, or even a racing boat when you slow down, you lose your grip on the water. When you're going to wind, most of your sail force is pushing the boat sideways. To go forwards you have to counter that force. If you look at a triangle of the forces, the vector that's pushing the boat forwards is directly proportional to the reaction to the sail force. If you can't create a reaction to the sail force, you just go sideways. You can have the biggest and most expensive rig out there, but if you don't have a dagger board that counters that force, you're wasting your money. I also ask myself why I need two boards. A lot of the drag created by a keel is from the tip losses around the end of the keel. By having two boards I've increased that. I also couldn't imagine that asymmetric drag would be big enough to create a problem. And when I sail with one or the other board down originally, I couldn't see any difference. Also, by combining the two boards into one, I could create a board that had more cord, which to me was important. So basically I was creating a, a keel the same as on a keel yacht. So I sat down and designed this foil, which was 150% bigger than the original two foils combined into one, five meters long and weighed about 150 kilos from memory. It was a big job making it and retrofitting it into the boat, but when I finally got into the water, I couldn't believe the difference in the boat. I'd created a completely new boat that went upwind like a tractor, but fast. It pointed like the boat had never pointed before but even more importantly was the speed range that came with it. I could slow right down, right down and still go upwind like a tractor without slip or accelerate, ease off the wind slightly and the speed would just take off. Where I noticed the difference immediately was in the steering. Before when I was hard on the wind, the steering got really heavy. Now it was like I'd fitted power steering. There was no weight, no weight at all on the wheel. Because the dagger board was doing its job and stopping the boat from going sideways, there was no side loads on the rudder. All the rudders had to do was to pivot the boat around the centre board. This meant the small autopilot that I'd originally fitted that used to struggle when I was going to wind was operating with no effort whatsoever. Having the ability to go to wind at slow speed in a catamaran is extremely important safety wise. This proved itself in the Pacific, when I got into some really heavy weather, I was sailing on autopilot, basically as a solo sailor, and the ability to be able to reef down and slow down, and to be able to point and drive upwind at a slow speed is so important. When you've got huge seas running and it's stormy, you don't want to go fast, it's dangerous to go fast. I wanted to get my head down and sleep while the boat continued on autopilot, and to be able to move slowly but point really high with no slip in the water without losing steering because they're under load. 
meant the ride was not only more comfortable and under control, but I actually got to where I was going quicker anyway, because I could move in the direction I wanted to go. I only raced the boat once, up on the Whit Sundays at the end of a race week in a fun race with 120 other boats, mostly racing boats. It was a triangle with two legs hard on the wind. Starting on a handicap, being one of the last boats over the line. In the first two legs, I'd overtaken 80% of the fleet, were pointing higher and going faster than racing monohulls. I inspected the dagger board after I caught up with the boat after 19 years in the water and the board still looks and performs just as it did the day it went in. Despite its size, there's no asymmetric drag at all with the dagger board and on top of that, in the interior, you free up one side of the boat completely. Here's some shots how the board looked installed in the portside hull. and it leaves the starboard hull completely open. That's where the galley was. And finally, here's a bit of footage from Malcolm, the new owner. The boat at speed in Port Phillip Bay. We've uh, got the speed record for the day, 16.6, we'll call it. Play my roosters. And rooster one. <laughs> Uh, we lost the other bloke, we don't know where he went. I hope this video has been informative. Thanks for watching.